I hope everyone is doing well today. I'm Beth Nickel with Arizona Science Center, and I'm here today to talk to you about some really fun and exciting and engaging things that you can do with your kids to keep their math skills going during the summer months. Now, we all know that um, during the summer, kids don't want to do school. They don't want to sit there and do anything formal in their learning. But you can do a lot of fun games that will help keep the kids engaged in their uh, math skills and keep them on par. So you can do it all very easily with cards, decks of cards, and with dice. So uh, very easy. You ho hopefully have some around your house already. If not, you can get them for very inexpensive at the dollar store. All right, so the first thing you want to do when you are working with your kids, having some fun playing these math games, is if you're using cards, get rid of the face cards. Um, the jacks, kings, queens, and aces don't need to be in there. Get rid of those. We just want the number cards. All right, so starting off with our youngest learners, one of the best things you can do is really um, making sure they understand bigger and smaller, larger uh, and smaller. So to help um, keep those concepts going over the summer, super easy. You can, uh, however many people are playing, whether it's you and just your child, or maybe there's uh, several of you sitting down to play a little bit, is hand each person two cards, and then have your child identify, if you're talking the little ones, three, four, or maybe five years old, which card is larger, which card is smaller. Um, and then have them, you know, moving forward. If you're playing um, together and each one of you gets a card, then have your child identify, okay, I've got the card that's a three, so that's the smaller of the card. Um, my mom has the 10, and that's the larger card. Just really helping them keep those concepts of larger and smaller um, in focus for the summer. Again, you can do the same thing with dice. Roll a couple of dice, which one, again, is larger, which is smaller. The dice is really helpful, too, because then you can really point out that one-to-one -one correspondence. If you have your child actually touch and count um, each dot on the dice, one, like one, two, or oh, where are we, one, two, three, four, that helps to, to really um, solidify and keep that one-to-one -one correspondence going. All right, so um, if you have um, uh, older kids, not super old, but maybe elementary age kids, and they're really working on their addition, subtraction, or multiplication facts, same thing. Get out your deck of cards, get out your dice, um, and then you can play what we used to call in the old time, math war. Um, you know, we can still call it that, I guess. But again, each person, uh, shuffle your cards, getting rid of the um, getting rid of the face card, shuffling your cards up, each person getting two cards. So let's say if I got these two cards, if I'm adding them, if I'm working on my addition facts, I'm going to say 9 plus 10 equals 19. I'm not doing a very good job holding my cards up. 9 plus 10 equals 19. And then let's say if my, um, if I'm Another person playing, I have a 9 plus 2 is 11. So which is larger, 19 or 11? Whoever has the largest gets all four cards in their stack. The goal is to see who ends up with the most cards at the end. Again, you can do this not only with addition, but with subtraction. Two cards for me, two cards for you. My two cards are an 8 and a 3, so 8 minus 3 is 5. The two cards, oh, that uh, the other person got were 3 minus 3 is 0. So again, 8 minus 3 is 5, is larger than 3 minus 3 is 0. So I'm going to get to keep those cards. Same thing with multiplication. Again, two cards for everybody. 7 times 2 is 14. Oh, wow. And I'm going to have to do 6 times 10 is 60. Again, 60 is bigger than 14. 
So the other person wins on that one. Again, you can do the very same thing with your dice. You have fewer numbers on your dice than you do on your uh, cards. But again, if I rolled a 6 times 6, I could either add them, subtract them, or multiply them to get the answers. And again, whoever you can keep score on a piece of paper, whoever ends up with the largest uh, uh, number then gets the point. So just some easy, fun games that way. Now, when you're looking and, and you're talking with some uh, kids who are even older and maybe they're beyond their uh, multiplication and division and they're working on things such as exponents or fractions, you can again continue these types of activities just um, practicing playing games with cards and or dice. So if we're doing exponents, now with the exponents, I would suggest having a piece of paper and a pencil and a calculator on hand because some of the numbers in the cards can get pretty big and you could be really having to do a lot of math that might be a little more than um, everybody can do in their head. So let's say if I am doing exponents, I've got the two cards that are laid out. Ooh, oh, that got snuck in. An 8 and a 3. So if I'm practicing exponents with my kids and playing exponent games, what you're going to do with your exponents, you have your base number and then you have your exponent, which means how many times that same number gets multiplied. So if I've got these two numbers, my largest card, which is my 8, is going to be my base number. My smaller card, oops, which is the 3, is going to be my exponent. So what 8 to the third power means is that I'm going to take 8 and I'm going to multiply 8 by it times itself 3 times. So I'm going to have to find the answer to 8 times 8 times 8. So 8 times 8 is 64. And then I'm going to take 64 times 8. And then I'm going to have to multiply that. So again, because I said some of these can get pretty big, you might want to have a calculator. But 64 times 8, let's say 8 times 4 is 32. 6 times 8, 48, 49, 50, 51. So that, my answer is 512. So 8 to the third power is 512. So again, if you do that with uh, another partner, again, it's all the same concept. Whoever has the largest number gets the cards, and then you have the points. <clears throat> so working on fractions using this same concept. Again, fractions are a really hard concept for a lot of kids to understand because fractions are what is the part to the whole. And so really looking at using our uh, cards to determine that numerator and that denominator. So again, if um, I am playing a game, me and my child, we'll each get two cards and a pencil or a pen. And so the way this works is you take one card and you're going to put it on top as your numerator. So that is your part to the whole. So right here I have six, and this is hard to do online. And my bottom number or my numerator is going to be Eight. So my fraction is going to be six eighths. So there are a couple different things you can do if you're doing fractions using cards. We have the fraction six eighths. So I can look at it and say, first of all, what kind of fraction do I have? Do I have a proper fraction or an improper fraction? And because my numerator is smaller than my denominator, I have six out of eight parts that is going to be a proper fraction. And then my partner, who has the fraction 5 sevenths, we're going to look at these two and see which one is larger. Is 6 eighths larger or 5 sevenths larger? And so, again, just some fun different math things that you can do with uh, cards. So I hope that um, you have been able to get some ideas of some fun things that you can do that are games to make learning fun that involve helping your kids keep their math skills um, up to speed this summer. Again, all you need, inexpensive deck of cards, 
and or an inexpensive set of dice. Again, if you have any um, other interest or questions, please let us know. Again, uh, Parent Resource Live during the summer, we're coming on uh, just on Wednesdays at 11. But if you need any ideas or, or activities for your kids to do this summer, please check us out at azscience.org. We've got all sorts of um, uh, DIY activities, science experiments, science activities that your kids can do at home just to keep their learning fun. Um, we've got lots of other videos of different demonstrations that we do, and we also have lots of resources for parents as well. So thank you for joining us today. Again, I hope you have got something useful out of this to do with your um, kids to keep their math skills up to speed this summer. And thank you very much, and we'll see you again next week.